All right, so today I want to do a little trig review and then show you how it's used to find vector components or the components of a vector. I guess it doesn't really matter how you say it. All right, so I want to remind you when we look at our XY Cartesian plane and we want to identify a location in that plane, uh, usually we use the XY point but we can also use the polar coordinates, which would be the radius and the angle theta that that um, point makes with the positive x-axis. Now, if we sort of look at this, we notice that we can complete a triangle by sort of drawing in these two sides here. The length of this side is x, but it's also adjacent to the angle theta. And the length of this side would be the y-coordinate, but notice it's also opposite the angle theta. Now, if when I'm saying opposite and adjacent, and you're starting to have some trig flashbacks, that's good because I want to remind you of the trig functions that you learned in high school, in some math class. So the sine of the angle theta, when we have this kind of drawing, is going to be equal to the opposite side, that is the side opposite the angle theta over the hypotenuse. And I didn't label that yet, but this is the hypotenuse of our right triangle because this angle right here is 90 degrees. The cosine theta is defined as the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, right here, over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of theta is defined as the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, if I go in here and I use some of the other labels for these different sides of my triangle, I might want to just call the opposite side the y value and the hypotenuse is r. The adjacent side is x, hypotenuse is r, and then the opposite side is y, and the adjacent side is x. And so, you might remember that if you were given a point, maybe a point in the xy plane, but you were given its value or its, its location given the radius vector and the angle, you might remember that you could find the y coordinate by rearranging this expression right here, and you would say it was r sine theta, x would be equal to um, r cosine theta. And you also, um, you could say x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared times sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta which is just r squared. Oh, those are the some of the fun things that you did with this. Okay, so that is sort of our little trig review. If you're not familiar with the sine, cosine, and tangent, I'd say really spend a little time on trying to memorize those functions and knowing what they are. I honestly find, I think that this first definition here, when we're thinking of opposite and adjacent and the hypotenuse, those are the ones that are going to be the most useful. Um, I think in, in a moment I think you'll see why. So what a, why is this useful? Well, when we start talking about vectors, what we learn about a vector is that, if this is vector A, it has a magnitude and it has a direction. The magnitude is really reflected in the length of the vector. The direction is the angle normally, although sometimes it can be defined differently, the angle that that vector makes with the positive x-axis. So the reason that this is all helpful is because when we add vectors, we can't just simply add them blindly, like we can't just add their magnitudes together because we also have to pay attention to their direction. 
the only time when you can add two vectors together directly is when they lie along the same line. If they're both pointing in the same direction, we simply add the magnitudes. If they're in opposite direction, we'll have to subtract the magnitudes. So what we do is we use that fact to help us out when we want to add vectors. And we take this vector like this, and we break it down into x and y components. The way that we do that is we drop lines down to the x and y axis respectively. And when we do that, they have to intersect the axis at a right angle. And then these sides right here, this side right here, is the y component of that vector. And this side right here is the x component of the vector. Keep in mind, we can also sort of slide a y over here. And hopefully you see where I'm going with this, because notice that the two components of my vector a, ax and ay, combined with vector a, make a right triangle. And so we're going to use these trig functions over here to be able to calculate the components of a given this arrangement and what we know about our trig functions. So for instance, we know that the sine of theta is equal to a y over a. That means that a y is equal to a sine theta. The reason that that works is because the y component of a is opposite the angle theta. And so I was thinking of opposite over hypotenuse, a y over a rearranging it, I can calculate the y component of vector a. When I look at ax, I see that that side is adjacent to the angle theta, so I immediately want to use cosine. So cosine of theta is ax over a, and so ax can be written as a cosine theta. Another thing that I might notice is that the tangent of theta is ay over ax. This is something we're going to use later when we add vectors together. And we'll use that to figure out what the angle is of the sum of the vectors, how the direction of the resultant vector is pointing given its overall y and x components but we're not going to do that today. One last thing that I want to show you is I do not want you to sort of memorize these expressions and say blindly that the y component of a vector is always found using the sine of the angle and the x component is always found using the cosine. Remember that the reason that those were related the way they are here is because here a y was opposite the angle theta and ax was adjacent to it. But if I used a different angle, if I used an angle here, if I measured my angle relative to the y-axis instead, and I called that angle theta, notice that ay, for instance, is adjacent to that angle alpha. And so I would say the cosine of alpha is equal to ay over a, so a y can be found as a cosine alpha. I know, I hope I'm not freaking you out, but it's true, and I want you to think about that. Again, keep in mind that what's most important is thinking about how that component is related to the angle, and in this case, it's adjacent. In this particular arrangement, we could think about a x be written over being drawn up here, and notice that it's opposite the angle alpha. So the sine of alpha is ax over a, and so ax can be written as a sine of alpha. So very quickly I proved to you that you can't just blindly say that the x and the y components go with cosine and sine 
you have to think about how they are oriented relative to the angle that you're looking at. So we're gonna use these tools to help us break a vector down into components and then add components of individual vectors to find the total resultant vector when we're adding vectors. And we'll do more of that in class on Thursday.